Congratulations, New Wolverines, on selecting UVU as your university destination. Tonight, you begin a journey of adventure and personal growth. Tonight, you will be challenged to engage in something bigger and greater than you might have ever previously dared. Because at UVU, a vast and exciting world of education and social opportunities await you. Few things in this world can improve your quality of life and help you live up to your full potential like a college education. By choosing UVU, you've selected a dynamic and vibrantly growing campus that offers you many technological and physical advantages. But UVU is much more than bricks and buildings and computers. Tonight, it is my privilege to give you a special glimpse of not only what UVU is, but who UVU is. Our faculty, staff, and students who make Utah Valley University such a special place to learn and grow. UVU is a teaching university where students learn, do, and become. At UVU, this signature fusion of academic and active learning is referred to as engaged learning. This means you won't just study textbooks and be mentored by faculty. You'll be involved with hands-on learning opportunities that take you out of the classroom and into relevant, real-world experiences. Faculty from across UVU's academic spectrum lead students through curricula that include not only the what and the why, but also the how. From aviation science to geology to theater arts and humanities to everything in between, our faculty are not only teachers and mentors, but also experienced practitioners in their fields. This is the altimeter where we set the pressure altitude. This is Engaged Learning at UVU. And so we'll start with you, Amanda, and then we'll finish with you, Andrew. This is Engaged Learning at UVU. This is Engaged Learning at UVU. No matter what course of study you choose to pursue, our faculty will help you turn your passions and dreams into an engaged learning experience that leads to a fulfilling career and a better life for you, your family, and your community. As a UVU faculty member and the Dean of University College, I can personally stand behind that statement. My name is Katie Taylor, and I am engaged in teaching at UVU. In addition to academic life, you can choose from hundreds of activities that take you out of the class and into a vibrant student life community. Those activities range from participating in student government or one of UVU's 100 plus student clubs to intramural sports and civic or volunteer service. Nestled between the towering Wasatch Mountains and the glimmering Utah Lake, UVU provides easy access to outdoor fun and popular gathering places. Let's admit it, one of the most popular reasons to going to college is for the social life. UVU is full of students just like you who have found a way to connect meaningfully with other students doing something they really love. No matter what your interests are, there are other students at UVU who share your passion. You can join an existing club or start your own, enjoy theater or musical performances, attend athletic events, or participate in one of UVU's many traditions, such as homecoming or True Wolverine Night. When it comes right down to it, it isn't just about the place, it's about the people you share the space with. Choose now to get engaged with the people around you and actively engage in the full range of student life opportunities at UVU. This is how you'll gain the greatest degree of personal fulfillment from your college career. As student body president, getting involved in student life has made all the difference during my time at UVU. My name is John O. Andrews, and I am fully engaged in student life here at UVU. July 1st marked UVU's official entrance into the Western Athletic Conference, the most recent milestone for an athletic program that has matured at an accelerated rate in recent years. In 2009, UVU became the first and only institution to leap into the Division I ranks directly from junior college status. In the years since, UVU Athletics has produced Olympic and professional athletes, defeated national powerhouses in multiple sports, and added new and renovated facilities. Whether you're attending UVU on athletic scholarship or screaming Go Wolverines from the mall, there are countless ways to support the university's many sports teams. We can go on about exciting opportunities waiting here for you at UVU, but you'll soon find them out for yourself. As a recent graduate, I know you found a place where you can reach your highest potential. You also found dedicating and caring faculty and staff whose chief goals are to help you succeed. But simply being here is not enough. 
It's up to you to grasp the opportunity in front of you and put in the effort necessary to bring your dreams and goals to life. And remember that nothing worthwhile in life ever comes easily. It's in times of challenge and step backs that you find the best opportunities for personal growth. My name is Colleen Carado Senge, and I was fully engaged in making most of my times here at UVU. Right now, this very night, I hope that you will commit yourself to seek excellence in your studies. That commitment will ignite within you a passion for learning and help you set a direction and tone that will guide you to success for the rest of your life. As president of UVU, I say this with all confidence. My name is Matthew Holland, and I'm fully engaged in the educational experience at UVU. Will our guests please rise for the processional of the faculty of Utah Valley University. I'm K.D. Taylor, and I've been a UVU professor for 20 years. There are many things that I love and I'm passionate about. I love teaching. Maybe that's because I'm always trying to learn something new myself. And I love helping people. Most people don't know that I was a volunteer EMT and firefighter. As Dean of University College, I really love knowing that I'm helping students to succeed with their college studies. If I can be part of helping someone to grow and succeed, whether it's my own grandkids or my UVU students, that means the world to me. On behalf of the faculty at UVU and the deans, I am personally pleased and proud, as are all of us here tonight, to welcome you, our freshman class of 2013. We welcome you to Utah Valley University. Tonight is about introducing you to the many opportunities in front of you so that you may gain a sense of purpose and pride as you embark on your journey as a UVU Wolverine! Woohoo! <laughs> now you might be wondering, why do we make such a big deal about having faculty present on a night like this? 
is because faculty are at the very heart of your university experience. If there were such a thing as superheroes on a university campus, they would be our faculty. They may not wear capes, although they do wear robes occasionally, but they know and do amazing heroic things to help you learn and achieve your goals. Your professors will be mentoring you and partnering with you in a powerful journey that will shape your entire academic experience and many of your important life decisions as well. At UVU, we are proud of our faculty and the expertise they bring to the classrooms. So we have a processional to honor them, just as we did, and also to display to you the depth and breadth of knowledge available to you as a student on our campus. So whether you have come to UVU for a certificate, for an associate's degree, for a bachelor's degree, or are yet undecided, our faculty offer much to help you unlock the potential that exists inside of you. So tonight, I invite you to take advantage of their knowledge, seek out their help, make the most of every opportunity to learn from many who are leaders in their respective fields. In recognition of their knowledge, their commitment to excellence in teaching, and their status as respected teachers and mentors, please stand and honor them with a round of applause. Thank you, and please be seated. I'm Matthew Holland, and I'm president of Utah Valley University. When I think about the myriad of career choices I could have made, still today, nothing excites me more than the opportunity to work in the field of higher education. At my heart, I'm still a student who loves the world of scholarship and learning. I love the good old-fashioned notion of putting my head in a book simply for the rich privilege of gaining knowledge. Yes, my family is everything to me, and I'm passionate about my faith, but from a professional and civic perspective, I could not be engaged in a more important work. Good evening, everyone, and welcome to Utah Valley University. Uh, in the spirit of what KD said, I want to give a special thanks to our fantastic faculty here. This is a busy time of year. They've got a lot going on to get ready for these classes, but they are the heart and soul of this place. Thank you, faculty, for being here tonight. Another round of applause for our wonderful faculty. Parents and friends, uh, we're really delighted to have you here tonight and extend a special welcome to you, but our greatest welcome goes to our entering class of 2013. Welcome to UVU. <laughs> Joining me on the stage now is my uh, friend and colleague, Dan Fairbanks, and uh, it's my great pleasure to be sharing the stage with him tonight and uh, keep your eye on him. While I speak, and I'm not gonna take very long, uh, 20 minutes or so, he's gonna take that blob of clay right there and turn it into a bust of Benjamin Franklin. Uh, now, what's depressing about this to me is that he's not a professional sculptor. Well, I, I guess he is a professional sculptor, but his day job is that he's uh, an associate dean of our College of uh, Science and Health. And he's a world-acclaimed uh, geneticist. He's written four books and multiple articles. 
and he is uh, just a, a scientist extraordinaire in his own, own right. But he's a man of many talents. He's what we would call a renaissance man, and he's going to uh, piggyback off of uh, his, his own genes. He's the grandson of Avard Fairbanks, one of the most famous uh, artists from the state of Utah. He was a sculptor, did some of the most famous uh, pieces of Lincoln that we have in the country today. And Dan is going to sculpt a little bit about, uh, is going to sculpt this bust of Ben Franklin as I speak. And I'll say a little bit more later about why we're doing Ben Franklin. But uh, Dan, just say hello uh, and just a word about what you're doing here. Delighted to share with you the, this chance to uh, do some sculpture of Benjamin Franklin, one of the great founding fathers of our nation. And uh, some people ask me, well, what image do you use? It happens to be that one of the best images I can use to uh, uh, work from is that that's on the $100 bill. Uh, Franklin is ha holds a very prominent position in our, uh, in our monetary system. So, uh, uh, but also, of course, uh, great influence in the, in the history of the country, which you'll be learning about from President Holland this evening. So uh, thank you for having me. Keep, keep, keep your eye on him. Uh, and by the way, there are many reasons, many reasons to get an education at UVU, but a few of them include, you'll make a few of those Benjamins. You'll make more <laughs> with your UVU degree, so don't, uh, don't forget that. Uh, okay, I think uh, what I'd like to do now is um, uh, just a little bit of introduction about me to you. I'm gonna be with you here for uh, the, the years that you're here, and I'm excited about that. It's a great honor to be the president of Utah Valley University. and. Uh, and sometimes in these moments you might hear a resume read or something, but I, I'm not sure that's always the best way to get to know someone. Uh, I'm often asked, I'm a student of American politics, American political thought, what's the best book that's ever been written about America? And I have to answer in all truthfulness, the best book ever written about American democracy was written by a Frenchman, Alexis de Tocqueville. And uh, he said this in the, in the beginning of uh, his book, Democracy in America. The entire man is, so to speak, to be seen in the cradle of the child. Meaning, if you want to see the beginnings, uh, if you want to really understand either a nation or a per person, go back to their very beginnings. So, uh, let me take you to, uh, to my beginnings. I was born in a sink in South Provo, uh, and uh, very quickly after that, introduced to the good life uh, by my uh, parents uh, here locally. Uh, I didn't take too well when my mother put me in a dress. Uh, but I've since, uh, I've since overcome uh, most of that. Uh, here I am with uh, my father uh, and uh, a shot of my mother and my siblings. I'm happy to report that my little brother can now hold his head up on his own. And uh, I've learned to smile without getting a neck cramp and that my mother has her hair under control. So uh, we're making progress as a family. Um, so I went through the mandatory uh, phases of life. This was the Wyatt Herb phase uh, here, and then the all things American phase. Don't miss those socks and shoes there. And then, of course, the Pee Wee Herman phase, uh, <laughs> or academic nerd phase. Uh, if you take those last two pictures, you see all that you need to know about a guy who grows up to get a PhD in American politics and American political thought, a nerdy guy who likes those kind of things. So uh, that's what I did. I went off to Duke University and got a PhD in political science with a kind of a focus in American political thought. Later went back to spend a year at Princeton to add to my training uh, in, in my PhD field so that I could uh, learn as much as possible about the things that I was going to be teaching and writing about and uh, met a wonderful woman, have four kids. Uh, we live here on campus. Come over any night. We'll be happy to take care of you. I'm just kidding. Uh, we do want to take care of you, but don't come over every night, please. Uh, anyway, we, we live here on campus. We love this place. Uh, my family's here with me uh, sometime, uh, somewhere out in the crowd. I appreciate them. But uh, anyway, let's, uh, let me say a word now about UVU. I mean, you. You know about us, you've been looking at us, but there are a few things that I want to stress as you're coming into your education here. We are a teaching institution focused on student success. A lot of things that universities can become famous for, but we've chosen to remain singularly focused on you, the student. 
teaching you, helping to prepare you to graduate, to go on to graduate school, to go into the professional world, to contribute in civic life, to have a good, healthy personal life. All of those things are important to us and, and, and kind of are the focus of our energies in what you are going to do here as students at UVU. Now, as we've been thinking about it for a few years uh, here as an institution, how are we going to promote that student success? And there are kind of three legs to the stool, if you will, of a UVU education. The first is that we're what we call an engaged institution. I don't mean that in that special Utah County kind of way. Uh, I mean that you're engaged with the world around you. You're connected to the world, to problems, to issues, you're aware, you're kind of taking your learning and think about how does this apply or what can I do with it or in what way can we help shape the world or address an issue or a problem that will have some practical benefit. How do we bring the world onto our campus and listen to them and hear what's going on? That's what we mean by that and we're really focusing on that. We have uh, some terrific programs. Uh, we have uh, some engaged learning programs where we put some money into it where uh, faculty, community members, students can get together, do research projects and other things that will help support. Um, internships, uh, um, over 2,000 internships, we're really encouraging our students to get out into their various fields and experience that. We have a, a fully dedicated university project. We looked around our immediate community and saw that one of the most serious problems is a problem with childhood literacy and numeracy. Not enough of our young people, our youngest people, if you will, are on uh, reading level by the third grade. And if that doesn't happen, the, the trend lines are horrific about where those students end up. So we're working with United Way, with other community groups, to bring the resources of our great faculty and this university to bear on how we help the community uh, with that problem. Uh, we, we have the number one business resource center in the state. We're just very active across a range, all, all of our disciplines, really, in, in terms of how we can have an impact and get our students connected. We're also an inclusive institution. This is a place for everybody. You can start by seeing just from our academic offerings. We still have a robust set of certificate and two-year degrees, even as we've built out a tremendous offering in four-year degrees and three master's degrees. So wherever you are in that kind of academic spectrum, you're going to find a, a rich offering here at UVU for you to participate. We want you to come here and be able to pursue whatever your different goals are this way. But beyond that, we're more than academically inclusive. We want everybody in this community to feel comfortable on this campus, to feel like it's a safe and supportive place to pursue an education. And we try to support that with a range of different activities and support groups and centers and uh, conferences and dialogues that will do that. And so we have clubs that uh, range across all sorts of different, uh, uh, the spectrum of things, different uh, political perspectives, Democrat, Republican, that we have a whole set of uh, global intercultural and, and uh, multicultural activities and initiatives going on. We, do, uh, we have so many things going on this campus with respect to different uh, interreligious and philosophical perspectives. This is obviously a large LDS community, and we sit, we sit right next to one of the largest LDS institutes uh, in the world, really. But we know there are many students here who are not LDS. We have a, a wonderful set of uh, dialogues and activities going for students of different faiths. We're building a reflection center for students uh, of different faiths. And we also know there are many students here who are not religious, who come from a secular perspective. And uh, we have a tremendous set of offerings on a philosophical, ethical basis for students who come from that perspective. So we are really working hard, where we really genuinely want to make it so that everyone who walks onto this campus feels supportive in that inclusive kind of way. And then finally, uh, we are a serious institution. By that, we take learning very seriously. We have standards here. We will have expectations of you. Your faculty members will ask you to study hard and to apply yourself. We'll ask you to think and be curious and to not be complacent in the way that you do things. We'll ask you not to be sloppy in your work, to strive for excellence and to have your papers free of typos and to get the grammar right and the punctuation right and that all that you do, that you learn to do with kind of polish and excellence. And we're trying to do that across the board, academically, athletically, professionally, 
That's a, that's a value that speaks to us. And we see this reflected in the great work of our faculty. I, I just call that out because we're here tonight in that academic way, but, but some groundbreaking research with breast cancer research, uh, one of the nation's top uh, financial planning programs, having just started it a few years ago. Uh, we won effectively the NCAA championship of college theater. Uh, our, our theater group is uh, just doing a, a smashing job and uh, competing on the national level. So uh, these are just a few things. We, I could go on and on, but they're reflective of the kind of quality education that you can get here at UVU because we are dead serious about being excellent at what we do in an intellectual, academic way and across uh, all of our professional activities uh, here at UVU. Uh, in the spirit of that, I like to set this tone of seriousness right from the beginning. So all of you have received a personal letter from me the minute you were uh, admitted to UVU inviting you to read a couple of books. I hope you've taken me up on that opportunity. I'll be meeting with people uh, for this uh, freshman reading night. If you haven't signed up, you can still do so. One night we'll be reading My Dream of Stars. Uh, There's a great story about a woman from Iran who grows up to become an engineer and an entrepreneur and uh, finds her way into the International Space Station. It's a tremendous story along lots of different dimensions. And then for something a little bit uh, older and, uh, and uh, more intellectual, we go back to Crito by Plato. This is the Apology of Socrates. It's the trial of Socrates. And he was put on trial basically for being a teacher. And it's got these timeless questions about authority and conscience and education and youth and learning that are all right there in a few short pages of dialogue. It'll be a great discussion. We hope that uh, many of you will take advantage to join, uh, join us for that. Okay, well, with that uh, said, I want to shift into your first lecture at UVU. Well, it's a, it's a lecturette. Uh, and I'll just say a word about uh, Benjamin Franklin. What we do at UVU, we do intellectual things. We're curious about the world around us. Anthropology, sociology, philosophy, religion, economics, business. Tonight it's a little history and political science. That's my area. Recently published a book with a colleague about Benjamin Franklin. He's been on my mind lately. And it struck me, many people refer to Benjamin Franklin as the first great American. And I'll say a word about why that people may think that. But I also think in some ways he can be a prototypical UVUite, if you will, in the spirit of some of the things that we've talked about tonight. And again, keep your eye on Dan Fairbanks and it's amazing the way that, uh, that he's working on that. Ben Franklin was born in 1706. By age 12, he was apprenticing in his brother's uh, printing shop. Basically had to give up formal education at that point, had gotten sort of formally educated up until then, but then was working but he was determined to not let that stop him. And he continued to read on his own and, and be self-educated. He died in 1790, so in those 70, 72 years between when he becomes an apprentice at 12 is just one of the ro most remarkable lives that has ever been lived in our country. All I can do tonight is give you a kind of a taste and a glimpse of the contribution and man that Benjamin Franklin was. First of all, he was highly successful in the printing and newspaper businesses. After a few years, he figured something out. He could run a printing business better than his brother did. He was supposed to stay in as, as an apprentice, decides to kind of take off uh, prematurely, uh, got in a little trouble for that, uh, but went down to Philadelphia where he was able to work himself into his own business, became immensely successful. Part of the reason it was successful is because he was his own best writer for his newspaper and for some of the books that he published and, and, and uh, periodicals, the most famous being Poor Richard's Almanac. He became one of the wittiest, most satirical essayists in all of New England. And it drove sales of his, uh, of his book, which helped generate more interest in his business, and he became wildly successful. He was a, a brilliant writer and a brilliant businessman, all in the same. He, was the, he wrote the first true self-help bestseller, the autobiography of Benjamin Franklin. It's still a bestseller. We still read it. You can still find it on Amazon. And this was in the spirit of uh, Seven Habits of Highly Successful People, or How to Win Friends and Influence People. It's the story of his life, but why it was popular is because it helped tell the story of his success. And he gave recipes for his success and things that he did 
virtues that he practiced. And he gives a little grid for specific virtues that he thought were really important for his life of happiness and success. And he'd keep track of that. And he gave people an example about how to do that and follow that. And it became immensely successful and launched really in many ways that whole genre of self-help books uh, that, we, that are so popular today. He was a scientist of international acclaim. Uh, we all know the story of, of electricity and the kite experiment. Some of that's got a little bit of myth to it, but uh, he, he did so much more. He helped discover the whole concept of positive and negative charges, how to conserve a charge so you could create a battery. Uh, the little picture here, uh, it's kind of a famous painting of Franklin. Didn't actually work like that, folks. I don't think there were cherubim actually helping him in the moment, and uh, he was smart enough actually not to stand outside in the rainstorm trying to get electrocuted personally. Uh, he stood in his house, he kind of understood the concepts of grounding in a way that left him more protected. But he did do the experiment, and he wrote about it in such a way that it inspired other people to replicate it, which is one of the key principles of the scientific method. And he did that, and revolutionized the way that we think about lightning and electricity, created the first lightning rod to help avoid some of the problems that many of the homes, especially in those days of wooden homes and thatched roofs, had uh, to avoid the challenges of uh, lightning storms. World's first demographer, uh, meaning he studied population trends. Uh, he, uh, so th those who really founded the science, some, there, there was one in particular that says Franklin was really the guy that discovered this discipline. He was the early proponent of the wave theory of light. He was the study of ocean currents, and he was ahead of his time. When he first published new, what he thought were the most uh, swift ocean currents between England and America, it basically got ignored, was discovered decades later, and as people embraced it, it shaved weeks off of transatlantic travel. This guy was amazing. Any one of these things would, would uh, lead him to be famous, notable, that he can do these things across all these disciplines, and yet that's not it. The reason he was interested in ocean currents is because he was a postmaster. He wanted to figure out how to get mail faster from England to America. It was a very practical consideration that drove him to the science of ocean currents. So he was a postmaster in Pennsylvania, became the first postmaster of the United States. And then he became a diplomat to England and France during the Revolution and during the Constitutional period and was absolutely crucial. He had a very sophisticated way. He understood people. He made a great team with John Adams. They actually didn't get along very well. John Adams was hard-headed and practical, wanted to get business done. Franklin was a schmoozer. He understood the different cultures. Together they were able to work magic in ways that rescued the early republic when it was so vulnerable. And we have him to thank for it. Most people agree that second only to Washington, uh, Franklin was the man who saved the day at crucial moments for the founding of, uh, of, of America. And that's the final point. He is our founding legislator. He was the man who was there at the Con at, at Con Continental Congress. He was part of the drafting committee for the Declaration of Independence. Jefferson wrote it, but he had key insertions that changed and enhanced the, meeting, the meaning in really powerful and important ways. And he was the senior statesman at the Constitutional Convention that made um, all the difference in the world. I'll say more about that in, in just a minute. A remarkable life across a range of different uh, 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 disciplines. What we're trying to show you here, folks, is that this is what you do at a university. This is where you bring together the disciplines. That's the kind of root meaning of a university, the universe of learning. It's a place where you can pursue science. It's a place where you can pursue English literature. It's a place where you can pursue English and sculpting and art and music, science, politics, sociology. It's all right here. Franklin would have just been like a kid in a candy store to be at Utah Valley University. Uh, and in many respects, this is where he, he's in some ways our first great American uh, because, of his, uh, because of his beliefs about liberty and self-government, because of his commercial success, his Yankee ingenuity, uh, his ability to move between you know, different countries, but in his own, he'd wear this coonskin cap, 
kind of showing off the American frontier and distinctiveness. Uh, he's the kind of the first true American character in that way. But I, I hope what you see now is I'd like to connect this life to the first part of what I said. In many respects, we could adopt him as an icon of a UVU education. Engaged? Absolutely. What was driving his concerns about uh, uh, the ocean currents? It was a, it was a practical problem. He, he, saw, he was out learning, taking lectures as a student and listening to people about electricity that got his mind going and, and seeing the potential that that could have to fix things like uh, the lightning rod issue. So he was absolutely engaged, thinking about the world, practical in his output. Uh, but he was also very serious about it, studied hard. In that book, The Autobiography of Ben Franklin, you see the kind of schedule he keeps day by day, and he points it down, but writes it down hour by hour, that he'll get up very early in the morning, that he will read, that he will think, that he will plan. Then he'll have hours of work during the day, and then the more time in the evening to kind of rest and relax and recharge, but also think about the coming day and what he would do. He was absolutely determined to take what he did and do it the very best that he could. If there was learning out there to be had, he was going to learn it. And, and, and read voraciously and write clearly and, and think as carefully and critically as possible about any issue that he was facing. So he had an extremely serious turn of mind. And finally, he was inclusive. He was the one hovering over Jefferson's sh shoulder to say that this was a land where all people are created equal. He had seen what it was like to live in a world of religious intolerance. He had seen what it was like to see a world of political marginalization for some people and not for others. He knew the potential that could come from a society that was embracing of all, that embraced diversity, that embraced the, the ability of, of people to see things differently but yet come together and work together as an institution or as a whole. And in that way, I think every step of the way, Franklin goes on to represent uh, the very best uh, of, of what UVU uh, aspires to be. And I hope in that sense you may take from this an inspiration for you tonight, that you will do those things, that you'll be serious about your education at UVU, that you'll plan to work hard and do your very best, that you'll get engaged, that you'll get connected, you'll talk to your faculty members, how can I, is there a research project I can work with you on? Is there something out in the community I can do? Or here's an idea in this class and I see that it applies to this part of society. I'm going to go do something about that. We want that. And we want you to be inclusive and feel comfortable here and reach out to your classmates. You'll rub shoulders with folks. We have students from 50 different states, all 50 states and 73 different countries. Plan now to work at embracing others, welcoming them into your academic world as you move forward. As you do so, you will pay the ultimate compliment to Ben Franklin. You know, when Ben Franklin was leaving the Constitutional Convention, uh, the Constitutional Convention had been wrapped in secrecy. It was such a revolutionary thing, and the, those at the convention knew that if, if word got out too soon, that people might overreact before they decide anything. So it was absolutely secret till the very end. And even at the end, there were, it had not yet sort of been published what was happening. On the very last day, they're walking out of the, the, the founding fathers, walking out of the of Constitutional Hall at Philadelphia. And a woman asks, stops Ben Franklin or stops the group and says, do we have a monarchy or do we have a republic? And as the story goes, Ben Franklin famously said, we have a republic if you can keep it. I guess that's the other reason why I admire the thinking of Ben Franklin, because he knew something about the preservation of this great land that we live in, this great country that we live in. It depends on a set of activities and practices that frankly depend upon education. You're part of the saving of the republic. You're part of the saving of civilization. You're part of the preservation of art and science and democracy and freedom. We need you to get educated. We need you to work hard. We need you to make the most of your UVU experience, for not only for your sake and for your individual well-being, but for the well-being of all of us. I am so glad that you're, you've chosen to come to UVU. You're going to have a fantastic experience. It'll be life-changing for you. 
the world of opportunity that's before you, you don't yet even begin to see. But thank you for coming. Thank you for in advance for making uh, the very most of that. I'm very glad to have you here. So in conclusion, let me about a round of applause for Dan Fairbanks and the sculpting of Ben Franklin, which I think we'll invite him to keep doing for a minute if you want to. Amazing, amazing. Yeah, next year if you could do this in like 10 minutes, that would be better. Okay, I'm kidding, I'm kidding. <laughs> Thank you very much. I'll, I'll be back up on stage in just a minute. My name is Claudine Kuradisenge. I graduated from UVU this year with a degree in public relations. I start graduate school at Judge Mason University in Washington, D.C. next week. I was born in the country of Rwanda and barely escaped from the genocide there when I was only six years old. Many in my family were killed. Today I'm able to say that the tragedies in my past have not been able to rob me of the promise of my future. I'm passionate about learning and about being part of the process of peace. Everyone has the opportunity and duty to do something. I believe that one person can make a difference in changing the world. Tonight, most of you are very excited about starting your college career, and you should be. Yes, you should be. As someone who just graduated, I just want to leave you with some personal advice. The key to my success here as a UVU student and my personal growth is based on one simple thing. I asked for help. Let me repeat that. Yes, I asked for help. Utah Valley University has amazing faculty and staff members who are there to help you when you need it. One of those people was my advisor. He became one of the most important person in my life as a student. Likewise, I had five favorite teachers who were there to support me, guide me, and help me when I needed it. And I'm sure if I look around, I'm going to see some of them. Thank you for what you did for me. Thank you. Because of those people, I enjoyed every single minute I spent here at UVU. I was not afraid to go to these people and ask for help. I encourage you, new freshmen, to fully use all the resources UVU offers for your success. Now that I'm done and ready to start the next chapter of my life, I'm so grateful for the education I received here at this amazing place. Because of my time here at UVU, I'm truly ready to overcome any obstacles I may have found in graduate school and beyond. I do not fear obstacles because UVU taught me that they are essential for the development of inner strength and character. I have also learned that obstacles are gonna pop up in the next days weeks and months, and those obstacles are going to cause you to question your decision to attend college. What will you do when those challenging times come? How will you react to adversity? I want to show you how you can cultivate a mindset that will help you deal with those challenges head on. So. Under your seat, you'll find a brochure that looks like this. Please, take out the brochure and prepare to watch a short video with us. 
I wish you all the best and encourage you to make most of your times here at UVU. Don't be just another student, but be a successful student. And don't be afraid to go to these amazing faculty members and ask for help because they are here to make you successful. Thank you. With everything, there's a choice. In every decision you make, you can choose to do the harder things, like take the less traveled road, tackle the most difficult challenge first, start early and stay late, delay gratification. You get the idea. These choices are where you find a greater chance for good things to happen in the long run. Good things that most people want, but only some people are willing to work for. Things like better career options, better health, better opportunities for your children, and a better community to live and work in. Things that college graduates are more likely to achieve. Or you can make other choices, easier choices, choices that let you sleep in and play more, short-term choices that solve an immediate need but lead to less of a chance for those good things you want of yourself, your future, and your family. And with every decision, you make that choice. You choose the better chance at making good things happen or you settle for the lesser chance. It's your choice. It seems simple, right? But you know that there will be times, those challenging times, that in the short run make it seem like you've made the wrong choice, that you can't move forward no matter what you do. But those very challenges, those obstacles that block your path now, might prove the very lessons that you need to face and overcome the bigger and more difficult obstacles you'll face later on making you stronger and better prepared for your future and the better life you've chosen. So what will you choose? Yeah, you've already decided to attend Utah Valley University. You've enrolled in courses, bought textbooks, and found an apartment. Maybe you've even taken out a student loan. But have you made the choice to complete your education, earn a degree, and have a better chance at the life you want? Do you have a plan to ensure that your college experience at UVU is a success? Making some decisions right now about how you approach your university experience at UVU will go a long way in making sure you meet your college goals and put yourself on a path to the better life you want. Start today by making three simple choices. Number one, choose to commit to completing your degree program. Make that choice to improve your chances of success and rise above mediocrity. Approach every challenge or hardship with the intent to learn and succeed. Two, work hard. Accept that worthwhile things rarely come easy or cheap. Apply genuine effort and attention to all your schoolwork, activities, or sports. Push yourself beyond your present limits and earn your results. That's where the rewards are. The third choice, persist. Know that life is often difficult and unpredictable. Embrace the challenges as opportunities that help you grow. Learn from your mistakes, cultivate a positive mental attitude, and keep moving forward. When you make these choices, you'll be part of a new student success program called UV Commit. UV Commit will connect you to activities, services, and resources specifically designed to help you complete your chosen degree program. Through UV Commit, you can link up with other students who share similar goals and maybe some of the same challenges, providing extra support to help you realize your college goals. Make the choice to enroll in UV Commit today and start taking steps that will result in a UVU degree, a resume, and the chance for a better future. Tonight is one of those rare moments when you have the opportunity to contemplate your future and make a decision about how you will choose to respond to circumstances you've not yet faced. I challenge you to decide right now that you will not allow yourself to respond to any obstacle by quitting or giving up on your college goals. On the back of this brochure is a pledge card for you you commit. Tonight, I'm challenging each of you to take this pledge. First and foremost, this pledge is not a pledge to you you. It's a pledge to yourself, to your future, and all that you are hoping and dreaming to accomplish someday. I know from personal experience that it will take commitment, hard work, and persistence for you to complete your college program. 
There will be obstacles, sometimes big ones, but decide right now how you will choose to face those obstacles. Promise yourself right now that you won't let yourself take the easy path. Please take a moment and sign your cards together as this year's new entering class at UVU 2013. Ladies and gentlemen, you'll notice that there are no time frames on the pledge card. Every student here is different and will have a different path. It might take you two years or four years or six years or more, hopefully not too much more than six years. More important than the time frame, though, is that you make consistent progress toward your goal. Likewise, not every student has the same educational goal, and the goals you have now may change, and that's okay too. UVU wants to help you in any way we can. So we're asking you to fill out the bottom portion of the card, tear it off, and turn it in tonight so that we know that you are serious about your college goals. There will be a booth outside, and some student helpers will be at various uh, stations collecting them as well. When you turn it in, you'll receive a decal to place on the back of your UVU ID card. Showing this decal at many of the food court locations and campus events will entitle you to some great discounts that other students will not receive. But again, most importantly, I promise you that you will not regret your commitment to completing your college education. Now, we're gonna shift the tone of this event as we get ready to meet our terrific UVU student body president, Jono Andros. Thank you very much. Welcome to UVU. I'm Jono Andrews, and I'm the student body president at UVU. I'm all about approaching life with passion, giving everything 100%. To me, college is about discovering what you love to do and learning to do it with excellence and enthusiasm. I tell people, find your fire. I can't think of a better place to do that than here at UVU. Let's get it up a notch, yeah! All right, I'll promise you one thing. We'll keep it classy around here. No Miley Cyrus action out here from the VMAs, all right? But good evening. As one student to another, uh, it is my great pleasure to officially welcome you to Utah Valley University. All right, now each of you freshmen have a hat under your chairs. Can you grab that and also stand up for me? All right. Excellent. All right, honored that you guys are all here and that I can induct you personally to be, coming to be a part of the student body at Utah Valley University. Last year, I was selected as your student body president from those before you, and hopefully you'll be able to elect a student body president after me. Make sure to get involved tonight, uh, we're, or this year. We're very excited for this. So esteemed faculty and staff, and of course the administrators here, and family members present tonight, it is my distinct pleasure and privilege uh, to formally induct these new freshmen into the student body of Utah Valley University. Please place your hat on your head and wear it proudly. Because now you are a Wolverine. Woo! All right, freshmen, you've been extremely patient, and we've been very pleased with it. I know it's an academic situation, and most of our events are quite fun and a little bit less sculpting, which was fantastic, uh, but a little bit more party action. So. Uh, we're, gonna sit, we're gonna shift this now from a serious tone, and we wanna show you how, it, uh, how that being a Wolverine isn't just all about work, but a little bit of play. So let's have a little bit of fun, Wolverine style. <laughs> 